Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010, Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we are looking at practice test B for chapter 2, which is on distributions. Uh, this is a five question test, it's on Canvas, and you can take it as many times as you want. Anyhow, here's the first question. One visual difference between a bar chart and a histogram is that in a histogram, uh, the choices are the bars indicate group membership, the height of the bars indicates the value on X, the bars can be placed in any order, and the adjacent bars touch, but in a bar chart they are separate. The answer to this one is D. The adjacent bars touch, but in a bar chart they are separate. So a histogram, they're all put together because it's, it's a quantitative variable. And so you're just making these sort of arbitrary bins where you you draw a line and say, you know, people below this line go into this bin, people above this line go into this bin. Um, but in a bar chart, they're separate because their order is arbitrary. They can be changed. You can put uh, men before women, women before men. It doesn't matter. Um, the other ones here, let's see, the bars indicate group membership. Well, that would be in a bar chart. Uh, B, the height of the bars indicates the value on X. No, the value on X is indicated by uh, where it is left to right across the bottom. The bars can be placed in any order. That's true for a bar chart, but not for a histogram. Anyhow, that's number one. Number two says, this distribution can be described as normal or mesocritic or bimodal or uniform. Well, the answer to this one is bimodal. Bimodal means two modes, by two modes. And modes are frequently occurring scores, or in a histogram like this, they're the peaks or the humps on the, on the uh, histogram. And this one has two. It's, uh, it's not normal, because that means a bell curve, which has only one uh, mode. It's, a bell curve is unimodal, that's normal. Mesocritic is also a uh, descriptive term for a bell curve. It has to do with uh, how broad the top is relative to the other things. And uniform is totally flat across the top. So none of those are true. This one is bimodal because it has two modes or two most frequently occurring scores. Number three, which of the following distributions is leptocritic? That's our little vocabulary word. Um, and you get the choices between A, B, and C, or none of them. Well, the answer in this case is B. The middle distribution, which is tall and pointy, uh, is the right one. Lepto, remember, means narrow or thin. Um, and lepto and kurdic means bulge, so a narrow or thin bulge. And that's what we have here with B. Um, it is also true that lepto distributions have lots of outliers in their tails, so they tend to have what are called long tails. Um, the one on the left, uh, A, is mesocurtic, or middle bulge, and that's a normal distribution. The one on the right, uh, option C, is platocurtic, which like a platypus tail, and it's flat, uh, flat bulge. Anyhow, so the answer for this one is B is leptocurtic. Okay, and the next one, a normal distribution has a value of skewness that is what? It's uh, unmeasured, positive, negative, or near zero. Well, if it's a normal distribution, which means a bell curve, which means it's unimodal and it's symmetrical, then the answer is near zero. Um, it's only going to be absolutely zero for a mathematically defined curve. Uh, for any real distribution, it's going to be a number that is close to zero. Um, if it were, if we had outliers on the far right, it would be positive skew. If we had outliers on the far left, it would be negative skew. Uh, unmeasured, no, you can, you can measure uh, skewness for nearly every distribution. There are some bizarre exceptions. But um, anyhow, a normal distribution has skewness that's near zero. Number five, last one in the second pre in the practice test. In this box plot, the circles on the right side of the box indicate what? Uncertain values, missing data, outliers, or the only measured data points? Well, on this one, the answer is C, outliers. Those are unusually high values, and they're defined as outliers um, through a relationship to that box in the middle, which represents the middle 50% of the interquartile range, um, because they are more than one and a half times the width of the interquartile range above the third quartile. It's a little complicated, but anyhow. Those dots represent outliers, unusually high scores. Now, in this particular diagram, there are no low outliers, but those obviously can occur as well. Uh, but in this particular one, the dots indicate high outliers, and that finishes the second practice test for Chapter 2 on distributions. I'll see you for the third one.